Hi, family. Um, this is Kay Steps, and I'm back um, with um, some updated information about a story I did yesterday. Um, I did the story yesterday on um, the shooting at uh, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida, and in the in the um, comment section, I put up the update that they were saying that the the shooter was a Saudi national from Saudi Arabia. And I just want to bring a little bit more information to you about him and about how he ended up on a, an American naval air, bay, air station in the first place. And I also want to touch on a couple of other um, incidences uh, that have happened, that have taken place at um, naval bases and, 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 and other military uh, bases in the United States in just a week. In, in, in just a week's time, a week and maybe a couple of days, there have been three of these incidences. The one in Pensacola, Florida is the last one so far, but there were two prior to this. And I also want to bring some information about both of those. But but let me update you about this um shooting in Pensacola. Anti-U.S. tweets, well, this is coming, this article is coming from USA Today. Anti-U.S. tweets, Saudi student and a Navy hero. What we know about uh, Naval Air Station Pensacola shooting. Grace Hayek, Annie Blanks, Kevin Robinson, and Doug Stagling. Stangling, USA Today. This was published at 12.16 p.m. ET, December 7, 2019. It was updated at 4.51 at p.m. December 7, 2019. Officials are investigating the motive behind a shooting at Naval Air Station Pensacola early Friday by a Saudi um, aviator in training who purportedly authored a series of tweets expressing hatred of the United States. The shooter pulled out a handgun in a classroom at the Florida Naval Base and opened fire, killing three people and injuring eight others before a deputy fatally shot him, authorities said. While the FBI has not yet confirmed whether it's investigating terrorism as a motive for the attack, Pensacola's con congressional representatives have characterized the incident as an act of terrorism. Well, of course. But we'll see if they call the other two incidents that happened. We'll see if they if, if they try to classify them as acts of terrorism. We'll, but let's go on. Who was the NA Who was the NAS Pensacola shooter? The shooter was identified as a member of the Saudi military, according to a defense official who spoke to USA Today on condition of anonymity. And they're still not saying this guy's name. Why was a Saudi national at NAS Pensacola? He was one of 852 Saudi nationals in a training program that invites the best of the best from, from, from foreign allies, militaries to receive training in the U.S. He began his three-year course in August 2017 with English, basic aviation, and initial pilot training. So, for those of you who don't know, like I, I didn't know, that they have these training programs where they get these foreign ally military members of the military and bring them over here to receive training in the U.S., to receive military training in the U.S. And they're supposed to be coming from ally countries because the United States is supposed to be allies with Saudi Arabia. About 5,180 foreign students from 153 countries in the United States participate in the program. So those are all the so so all of those are foreign people, foreign students coming over here to participate in a military training program from about 153 countries. Many of these students operate U.S. military hardware that foreign governments buy from the United States. Saudi, excuse me, Saudi Arabia is the world's largest cu customer for arms, and many of those are American-made.
Then it goes on to talk about hours before the shooting, tweets purportedly written by the suspect railed against the United States for its support of Israel and for stationing troops at bases in Saudi Arabia. The tweets are addressed to O oh, American people. Come on now. And outline what the author said is a hatred of the United States for crimes against Muslims, including the detention of suspects in Guantanamo Bay. And the FBI is supposed to be investigating these tweets to make sure that these tweets actually came from <clears throat> the suspect. Again, they're not naming this guy. This guy's name has not been put out. Also investigating are the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the Department of Defense, and other national, state, and federal agencies. Then it goes on to talk about the relations between the U.S. and the Saudi and Saudi Arabia after this and how all the Saudi Arabians are, are apologizing and talking about how awful this crime was and all of that. Uh, but it's, it's just kind of funny to me that they're not naming this guy, that they're not putting his name out there. And it's kind of funny to me that they did a whole lot more reporting on this than they did on the one that took place the day before this Pearl Harbor. Now people knew about it, people had heard about it, but there was not there there was not a whole lot of mainstream media reporting and coverage of it. But of course this article will be linked in the description box and you can go and you can finish reading the whole article and all of this, and you can see maybe if, you know, you see somewhere in the article where they list his name, because I don't see anywhere in this article where they actually list his name. Or any of that. Let me refresh it and see what I see, because there's some pictures here, and I need to refresh it to see if any of these, any of these happen to be a picture of him. And list his name. But again, it's it, it, it's kind of interesting that we have that many, over five thousand foreign students that come in here every year to participate in this military training program, so that they can be trained by the United States. And of course, they're talking about in this article, you know, the changes that we need to make and, and, and some of the stuff that we need to do to uh, to, to upgrade the vetting uh, process so that we can vet some of these people a little bit better or whatever the case may be. Okay, that, that was a that's the video. Let's close this because we don't want to. Trying to see if I see any um any picture of him. There's some there's a couple of tweets. <coughs> and folks talking about acts of terror and all of this kind of stuff. And then they got pictures of the shooting victims. But I still don't see a picture of this guy. This this uh this this Saudi national who supposedly was the the shooter. I still don't see a picture of him. 
and you got this Rick Scott, whoever this guy is, and 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 um, Matt Gats. You know, all of these people want to talk about it's a it's a it's an act of terrorism and all of this. But I still don't see. Okay, so no, there's no picture of the actual suspect in this article. Now, somebody else may be able to find a picture of him, but there's no picture of him in this article. And since, you know, this article is supposed to be about the shooting and it's supposed to be about him and it's supposed to be about the relationship between um, Saudi Arabia and the United States. And it's supposed to be about this training program that, that, that put him in here in the first place. Then I don't understand why there's not a picture of him in this article. But anyway, I just wanted to bring you that update on the story I did yesterday about the shooting in Pensacola. Um, now, I want to move on and I want to talk about the shooting that took place the day before this in at Pearl Harbor. So there was a shooting before this at Pearl Harbor. And the one at Pearl Harbor is not getting anywhere near the attention, uh, the media attention, the media reporting, the media coverage that the one in, in Pensacola, Florida did. And um, and 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 I'll give you my thoughts as to the reason why. And this is coming from Navy Times. This is coming from NavyTimes.com. Sailor who killed two in Pearl Harbor shooting spree identified by Navy Times. And this was a day ago. This was yesterday. The sailor who opened fire at the Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard Wednesday, killing two Department of Defense workers and wounding a third before taking his own life, was mechanics mate auxiliary fireman Gabriel Antonio Romero. He was he, he was a Hispanic dude. In a prepared statement emailed to Navy Times on Friday, Pentagon officials indicated that Romero was assigned to the Los Angeles class attack submarine Columbia, which is home ported in Hawaii and is undergoing dry dock repairs there. Romero, 22, died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound less than two years after he enlisted in the Navy, officials added. His deceased victims are Metals Inspector Apprentice Vincent J. Kapoa, 30, and Shop Planner Non-Destructive Testing Ronald Rolden A. Augustine, 49. A third victim is recovering at a nearby hospital. Romero joined the, Arm the Navy out of Texas on December 11, 2017, according to his military records. After graduating the Recruit Training Command at Great Lakes, Illinois, and Navy Submarine School in Groton, Connecticut, he reported to Columbia on June 28, 2018. He picked up the pay grade of E3 on June 16, 2019. Questions have arisen about the mental state of the gunman in the days leading up to the mass shooting. Officials have declined to reply to concerns that Romero had sought out counseling and been targeted by an informal hearing tied to non-judicial punishment proceedings before he was provided loaded firearms for guard duty to the submarine. I heard in a, in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in another article something about um he had it, that something about uh anger management classes had been suggested for him to him it, it had been suggested not ordered but it had been suggested that he take some kind of anger management classes too that's all part of the invest that's all part of the investigation that's going on right now said rear admiral robert b Chadwick II, the commander of Navy Region Hawaii, during a fr Friday press conference. Speaking to reporters, special agent in charge for the NSIC Hawaii Field Office, Norm 
Dominice called the Pearl Arbor shooting a senseless act of violence, but vowed to, found that, to find out what motivated M M Romero to kill the shipyard workers. Now, nobody's, nobody's saying anything about terrorism now. Nobody's throwing out that, that terrorism word now. Federal, you know, we do have acts of domestic terrorism going on all the time. Federal and law and local law enforcement descended on Dry Dock 2 in the aftermath of the gunfire discover descending on Dry Dock 2 in the aftermath of the gunfire, Discover Romero had shot himself in the head and was dead. Surrounding the bloodshed were thousands of shipyard workers and all had to be screened by investigators to see if they had any information about the shooting. Witnesses reported that Romero gunned down the three men and then took his own life in the span of only 23 seconds. He said that there was no indication that M Romero was a domestic terrorist and it appears he acted alone. Conclusions that were echoed by FBI special agent in charge, Eli Sam Miranda. Okay. <laughs> there was no indication that Romero was a domestic terrorist. Okay, well then why was he shooting on, why, why was he opening fire on people? And if this was not maybe an act of domestic terrorism, then why was what happened in Pensacola, why they're trying to call that an act of terrorism? Okay. The somber press conference capped what Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Mike Gilday called late, late Friday a devastating week for our naval family. The man authorities say drove a truck through the gate at Virginia's Joint Expeditionary Base Fort Story before striking a Navy police cruiser and killing a sailor inside on Saturday was expected to be arraigned Friday. This is the second, this is the third incident. So this this is actually the first incident where this guy drove the, the, the truck through the gate at um Virginia's Joint Expeditionary Base Fort Story. He drove a, a, a truck through the gate and struck a naval officer that was in his cruiser and, and, and killed him. A, it, well, it was a Navy police cruiser and killed the sailor inside. Now, that was the first one. And his name was Nathan Lee Campbell, 38, of Shenandoah, Virginia. And he was in custody um, of the Virginia Beach Sheriff's Office. Master at Arms 3rd Class Oscar T. Tamares was responding to a report of a gate runner around 7.35 .30, p.m. Saturday when his police cruiser was struck head on by a 2004 Chevrolet Silverado pickup driven by Campbell at the intersection of Atlantic Avenue and Light Street, the Navy and police said. And this guy, this Nathaniel Lee Campbell, has a rap sheet. Now this is what they this is what the Navy has to say about him. Your Navy, the the the, the Navy Times. The man authorities say breached a gate at Joint Exped Expeditionary base Fort Story in a truck before striking a Navy police cruiser and killing a soldier inside has been charged with involuntary manslaughter, according to Virginia Beach Police. Nathaniel Lee Campbell, 38, of Shenandoah, Virginia, is in the custody of the Virginia Beach Sheriff's Office, the Virginia Beach Police Department said in a news release early Thursday. Both drivers were taken to Centara Virginia Beach General Hospital, where Tamarez died. That's the naval officer. 
Joint Expeditionary, Joint Expeditionary Base Little Creek Fort Story Commanding Officer Captain Joy Franson said earlier this week that Campbell was on base for a very short period of time before striking Tamara's vehicle. The incident remains under investigation by members of the Virginia P Beach Police Department's fatal crash team. A search of online Virginia court records shows that a Nathan Campbell matching a similar description as the man accused in Tamaris' death faced a misdemeanor reckless handling of a firearm charge in late December 2009 in Page County General District Court where Shenandoah is located, for which he was found guilty. He received a 60-day suspended sentence and a year of unsupervised probation. It appears that same Nathan Campbell also has had also has been ticketed for multiple traffic violations, including speeding, and was cited in April 2015 for driving on a suspended or a revoked license. He later was found guilty of that offense, too. Within days of that incident, he was arrested on charges including misdemeanor assault and battery of a family member and a felony charge of strangling another causing injury. Campbell entered an Alford plea of guilty to those charges in June 2015 in Page County Circuit Court. In an Alford plea, the accused denies guilt but admits that a court has enough evidence to convict on the charges. A charge that he also made a bomb or burning threat was dropped later. Campbell received a five-year suspended sentence on the federal on the felony charge and a 90-day sentence with 29 days suspended on the misdemeanor charge, according to the court records. He also received four years of supervised probation. Now, this guy has 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 has, has had all kinds of traffic violations. He, 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 he now he's been charged with assault and battery of a felony felony member and a felony charge of strangling somebody. And there was also a charge that he made a bomb or a burning threat or something that was later dropped. This guy has all these charges. Reckless handling of a firearm. Speeding, driving with a suspended or revoked license, assault and battery of a family member, a felony charge for strangling another causing injury. All of these, and this guy does no real jail time. He also received four years of supervised probation. Court records show that a Nathaniel Campbell was arrested December 29, 2015 and charged with public swearing and intoxication in Harrisburg, Rockland County D General District Court. It's unclear in the court records if that triggered more charges, but in early 2016, Campbell was arrested and charged in Page County Circuit Court for violating the terms of his probation. It appears from online court records that Campbell spent several months in confinement in connection with those violations. So he didn't actually do any time, any jail time, until he violated his probation. The town of Shenandoah is located in Virginia's rural, rural Shenandoah Valley, 25 miles east of Harrisburg and more than 200 miles from Fort Story, which sits at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. A woman reached by phone by Navy Times Thursday morning identified herself as Campbell's mother. She could not be reached again later Thursday. So this is the guy who started this naval base type, uh, type uh, uh, killing spree. And as you can see, this guy, and I also have this uh, article linked in the description box. As you can see, this guy has a history. He has a long rap sheet. And he also has a history of slaps on the wrist. Suspended sentence this, probation that, and all of that. And he didn't actually do any real jail time until he started violating his probation. But he has felonies, violent felonies, all of that. And he's the one that started this whole kind of naval base 
killing spree thing that's going on uh, uh, all this week. Okay, now let's get the date together for him when he did his thing. So let's go back to let's go back to the article that we were just on where we pulled this from. Okay, so the Little Creek thing in Virginia happened last week. That was last Saturday. So it's been a week because today is Saturday. So it's been a, a, a full seven days. So last Saturday is when this Nathaniel, uh, uh, what's this dude's name? Let me get back to this dude's name. Nathaniel Lee Campbell. Okay, that was last Saturday when he bust through the door, I mean the gate at uh, Little Creek and hit the patrol car and the the police cruiser and killed to, uh, the, the, the sailor inside. That was last Saturday. Okay, then Pearl Harbor on Wednesday with Romero. shooting three people, killing two, wounding another, and then shooting himself. And then Thursday with Pensacola, where this so this 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 Saudi national that we still don't have a name for uh jumps up in a classroom, shoots and kills three people, wounds eight others, and then uh, and then is taken out by uh, a sheriff deputy. So in a week's time, we have these three, with these three killings on naval on navy on naval bases. So what's really going on? What's really going on? And 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 this this Nathaniel dude with all of his history, with all of his past, he's only being charged with involuntary manslaughter. He's only being charged with involuntary manslaughter. With all of his other history, he has violent crimes. He has traffic violations. Uh, uh, they say something about there was a, a, a bomb or a burning threat, and that charge was later dropped. Uh, but with all of that, he's only being charged with involuntary manslaughter. Now, the other two can't be charged with anything because both of them are dead. They say that Mar Romero died at his own hand and he shot himself in the head. And the Saudi national, who I, don't, I still don't have a name for, I'm going to look it up and see if I can find it um, and put it in the description box if I can. But the Saudi national, um, the S, S, what do they call it? The Escambia uh, uh, sheriff deputy took him out. And the only one that, that anybody's even talking about as far as terrorism is concerned is the one with the Saudi national. That's the only one where the word terrorist or terrorism or act of terror is, 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 is being thrown around. Is the one with the Saudi national that happened in Pensacola, Florida. Sounds to me like there's a pattern. There's a pattern. There's something going on. There's a pattern. When you have three killings. Back to back to back like this. Same scenario, naval bases, military bases. 
That's a pattern. And it, and, it, and it makes you wonder why the United States is 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 opening up uh, opening up uh, 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 the borders for all of these foreigners to come in here and get military training. What's that really all about? Let me throw that number back out at you again. We got to go back to the Pensacola article. And let's throw that number back out there. The, 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 the alleged Saudi national that did the shooting at NAS Pensacola was one of 152 Saudi nationals in a training program that invites the best of the best from foreign allies militaries to receive training in the United States. About 5,180 foreign students from 153 countries in the United States participate in this program. Why? And why is that something that our tax dollars have to pay for? Because you know our tax dollars are paying for it. And also in, in, in this article about the Saudi national, what does this mean for U.S.-Saudi relations? I'm going to bring this back home. The U.S. has long had a robust training program for Saudis, providing assistance in the U.S. and in the kingdom. The shooting, however, shined a spotlight on the two countries' sometimes rocky relationship. President Donald Trump, who spoke with King Sol Sol Solomon of Saudi Arabia shortly after the shooting, said the monarch called the attack barbaric. The Saudis are devastated, Trump said Saturday. The king will be involved in taking care of families and loved ones. Obviously, the government of Saudi Arabia needs to make things better for these victims. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said in a press conference, they're going to owe a debt here. How does America have the audacity to talk about a debt that is owed here? First of all, when you're the one invited them in, you, you the one got a training program set up for them. And not just them, but but uh, but 153 other countries. You just invite these folks in, and you and you teach them all kind of military tricks and and, and all kind of military operations, and give them all kind of weapons uh, uh, training and all of this. And then when they flip the script, if he really flipped the script, if this is to be believed, and he actually is the one who did this, you want to talk about a debt owed. The United States doesn't have a right to talk about anybody else owing a debt to anybody in the United States until they pay the debt that they owe to foundational black Americans. When you pay the debt that you owe to us, a 400 plus year debt that you are refusing to pay, that you are that, that, you, that a lot of you are refusing to even admit that you owe. Until you pay that debt, you don't have any right to talk about any debt that anybody else owes you. After you open up the borders and let these folks in, so you can, so that you can continue to to sell arms to these different countries and teach these people how to use the arms that you sell to their country. See, it's about money. It's lucrative. You heard what they said in the article. Saudi Arabia is the world's largest customer for arms. Largest customer for arms. And many of those are American made. So of course you want to keep that, 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 that that lucrative business deal going, of course you want to continue to sell arms to the Saudi Arabians and you want to make sure 
that their military knows how to use them. So you invite them over here. It said that they are invited over here. So you invite them over here so that you can train them to use the arms that you make that you then sell to their country. A hundred and fifty, about one five thousand one hundred and eighty foreign students from one hundred and fifty three countries in the United States participate in this program. He was one of eight hundred and fifty two Saudi nationals in a training program that invites the best of the best from foreign allies, militaries to receive training in the U.S. And then you got a nerve to talk about a debt that's old here. Foundation of Black Americans, we weren't invited here. We were forced here. Forced into, slang, uh, into chains and into slavery. And into, and, and, and into uh, uh, being oppressed. And into bondage. And into this white supremacist system. So until you fix the debt that you owe right here on American soil. Until you fix the debt that, that, that you caused. The debt that you owe. Until you fix that, you don't have a right to talk about anybody else owing you a debt. Especially not for folks that you invited in. And now you want to call it terrorism. After you invite them in and you train them. And you give them all this military training and all this arms training and all this. Now you want to talk about it's an act of terrorism. But Romero, who is homegrown, you're not calling that an act of terrorism. This white Hispanic. The white man, Nathan uh, Campbell, who has this long rap sheet. And validly bust in a gate at a, at, a, at, a, at a naval base. You don't you don't call that terrorism. No, you just gonna charge him with involuntary manslaughter. After you done gave him a slap on the wrist with everything else that he's done. But black folks, pay attention. Again, I advise, please pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to all of these attacks all of a sudden. It's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Because the question becomes, were these people triggered? Why all of a sudden? This, this Romero guy was only 22 years old. They don't say how old the Saudi national was. The white guy from Virginia, Nathan Campbell, was 38. Were these people triggered? So pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Like I said in the video about the churches, we got to pay attention. We got to, you know, we got to be ready. We got to be, we, you know, we got to get our arms up. You know what I'm saying? We got to get our self-defense up. We've got to get our protection mechanisms up. Because this is three incidences in just a week, in just seven days, from Saturday to Saturday. Back to back to back. You know, are these are, are, are these what they call them? Uh, uh, false flags? For the military to, 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 to do something? For the for the military to 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 uh, to, 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 to set certain operations in or in, in, in place and, and for them to you know to start ex executing certain operations or whatever? Are, are these false flags?
So pay attention. Something is looming on the horizon when you have three back to back to back just like that. But I just wanted to bring you the update on the Saudi National. I want to bring and I wanted to bring you the other two stories that happened prior to that so that you could see the string and see the pattern. And know that there's something more going on here. So pay attention and stay aware. And I'll try to find a picture of this Saudi guy. If, 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 if the Saudi national guy, if I can find him, there is a picture of of, of Romero, Gabriel Romero. There is a picture of him out there. There's also a picture of this uh, Nathan, Nathaniel Campbell guy, the one from Virginia. And I'm going to see if I can find a picture of the Saudi national. Because like I said, they're not even reporting his name. But the links to the article will be in the to these articles will be in the description box. And you can go and you can read the articles thoroughly or, or you can Google it and, and find other articles that may have, you know, other information or more information or different information or whatever. But um, just be aware that something is definitely going on. And I'll be back with you when I have some more news to report. And I do have another story that I'm going to bring to you real soon. It, it, it'll be interesting. Very interesting. But um, you guys have a good night.